Hi, I'm Andrea Mulrine. I'm president of the League of Women Voters of Lackawanna County, and I want to thank you for sharing some time with us today as we interview the candidates for Lackawanna County Controller. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, political, volunteer organization that encourages the informed and active participation in government. We do that through events like this, where we interview candidates, and also with candidate debates. There are several races in Lackawanna County, actually throughout the county and all of the municipal boroughs and townships, uh, but we're going to focus at the League on a couple of races uh, for this particular primary season. The first is the race for the two seats that are, are open on the Democratic ticket for the Lackawanna County Commissioners. And we'll be debating with those particular candidates on May 4th. That'll be at 7 p.m. in the Naples Center on Mulberry Street in Scranton at the University of Scranton campus. Uh, all of the candidates, as far as I know right now, will participate. I believe there's seven on that particular ticket. Then on May 5th, we will be debating with the Republican candidates for that same race. So this is the Lackawanna County Commissioners. We're doing two different debates, one for the Democratic candidates, one for the Republican candidates. There are three candidates on that ticket, and as far as I know right now, all three of them will participate as well. That event will be held in the Pern Auditorium, which is in Brennan Hall on the University of Scranton campus, and that's on Madison Avenue, also at 7 p.m., and that's at, uh, again, on May 5th. And then the last race that we're going to focus on for this particular primary is Scranton City Council. And just the Democratic race at this point in time. Um, we'll be debating with those candidates, and that will be, again, in the DeNaples Center, uh, which is on Mulberry Street in Scranton at the University of Scranton campus. That debate will be held on May 11th, and that will also be at 7 p.m. We're only focusing on the Democratic race at this point in time because there is no race on the Republican ticket. There is a candidate, but there is no race, so we will not be debating with that particular uh, side of, uh, of the ballot at this point in time. We'll pick up the Republican candidate in the fall, when we do our, our fall programming as well. So uh, for today, we're going to interview the candidates for Lackawanna County Controller, and then we also have another series of uh, interviews with the uh, candidates who are running for the Scranton City Controller position as well. So we hope that uh, you'll have an opportunity to tune into ECTV as they broadcast these uh, uh, events for us, as they tape them and broadcast them. And then we'll also make them available on the League's website, which is www.lwvlackawanna.org. So with me this morning is Gary DeBilio. Good morning, Gary. Thanks morning, for joining Andrea. us today. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Gary is running for, uh, again, the Lackawanna County Controller position. And we're going to go through a short bio on Gary, and then we'll get into our Q&A uh, uh, session. I do want to state that we haven't given any of the candidates for any of the events that we're doing any questions, no topics. We've just said, you're a candidate for the office. Come prepared to answer questions that pertain to that particular office. So uh, Gary's gotten nothing in uh, in advance from us except our good wishes and hopes that he would show up today. So. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so Gary is a West Side resident, West Side of Scranton, and uh, grew up in West Side as well as a graduate of West Scranton High School. Went on to Penn State where he earned his degree in business administration and now owns Gary DeBilio Insurance and Financial Services Agency, which is also located in West Grant, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is, yes. Okay. Uh, Gary uh, is the president of the Kaiser Valley Neighborhood Association. He's on the board of the Salvation Army and he's a lector at St. Patrick's Church. In addition to that, Gary does have some political experience, having served on the Scranton School Board for five years, and that was in the 1990 period, yes. 1994 to 2000, I think we said. I was appointed something. in 1994 and then ran for the office in 95 and was successful. Served through 99. Okay, okay. so th through 1999. And then Gary served a term on Scranton City Council, and I believe for one year or two years you were also president of Scranton City Council. Uh, two years, For yes. a two-year term. Uh, Gary lives in West Scranton with his wife Christine and his four children uh, who are aged 17 to 10. So you've got yes, a busy life right. going on. Yes, I do. So with that, we'll get right down to the Q&A. Um, so the first thing that I want to just give everybody an idea about what the Lackawanna County Controller does. So according to Lackawanna County's Home Rule Charter, the controller is the chief financial officer of the county and is responsible for gathering budget information, prescribing systems of accounting, approving all bills, claims and demands, and preparing and authorizing their approval. Subject to the power and duty of the county commissioners to manage and administer the fiscal affairs of the county, 
The controller audits books, records, and accounts of all county officers and makes financial reports at the close of the year. So, Gary, having said all of that, what qualifies you to run for this office and include any financial or managerial experience and major accomplishments in either the private or public sector that distinguish you from your opponents for this position? Andrew, I think that the thing that qualifies me the most is my business and financial background. Uh, I've run the, uh, my business for the last 25 years. Um, I've had the privilege of handling the public's money over that whole time period. I've never been accused of mismanaging money. I never will. I've had the uh, great fortune of working with people that are very good at what they do, which allows me the opportunity to work full time as the Lackawanna County Controller. Um, having served on the Scranton School Board and, and uh, Scranton City Council, um, I just have the background, I think, that's really needed for this position. And again, I think the, it's all about trust and accountability, and uh, I've never mismanaged money before. Okay, thank you. The controller, according to the definition, is more or less the watchdog of our tax dollars, responsible for ensuring that rules are followed, the budget is adhered to, and that our bills are paid. How will you ensure that appropriate policies are followed? I'll follow all state mandated requirements and I'll make sure that every penny is accounted for, Andrea. And I think that's important. Attention to detail in this job is very, very important and uh, making sure that all uh, audits are performed and that uh, overseeing all bidding and just making sure that all checks and balances in general are followed to the, uh, to the state mandated requirements. To be sure that every, every penny is accounted for, as I said. But um, I will follow all the rules. I've always done that in business. We'll do that in this position. And uh, you could be sure that your money's safe with me. Okay. You mentioned this. Can you explain the county's bidding process and the role that the controller plays in it? Yeah, the, uh, for all spending under $4,000, um, one letter is required, as, if you would call it, so that uh, it's in writing and it, it looks to be you know, totally um, uh, okayed for spending. Between $4,000 and $10,000, Three bids are required on paper, not bids, but, but quotes, let's call them. Um, the lowest responsible quote is the one that uh, is awarded the, the job. Over $10,000, it goes out to a public bidding. <clears throat> it's advertised, it's uh, opened in public, and uh, all the, you know, the public is, is um, available to be there for to open up the bidding. So under $4,000, one quote, $4,000 to $10,000, three quotes, over 10,000 is a public bidding situation. Okay, and the controller's office, the role that they play in that? And the role that they play is overseeing that whole process. Every uh, of the three aspects, they'll oversee each one of those in making sure that we're not overspending the people's tax money. To be sure that, um, you know, money is not being wasted. And I, that's the, the key behind the whole controller's office. Money is not being wasted. Taxpayer dollars are being spent uh, accurately and according to uh, state mandates. Okay. What reports are available to the general public pertaining to the county's financial health each year? Do you think they're being completed in a timely manner and are improvements needed? Well, as far as the controller's office goes, um, I'm, it's my understanding that audits are, are not being performed the way they should be. Uh, for example, the treasurer's office has not been audited in three years, and it's supposed to be audited every year. I'll be sure that every audit that is supposed to be uh, performed is, is performed in a, a timely basis. Um, as far as uh, the office itself, I'll, op I'll uh, operate an open-door policy uh, for transparency purposes. Anybody is welcome to come into the office to look over any documents that uh, I'm responsible for. So I'll make sure that uh, it's open to the public and anybody could see whatever they would like to see as far as uh, the documents go. Okay. Gary, every day, as you know, businesses are looking for better ways to do things. What are your plans for increasing efficiency and or effectiveness of the controller's <clears throat> office, if any, and if there are none, why not? Well, having been in business for the last 25 years, we're always looking for ways to improve and uh, always finding small areas 
uh, that we can get better at. And once, the, I'm, once I'm Lackawanna County Controller, I'll look at the entire operation. We'll make sure that we find ways to be more efficient and that there's no waste being, being done in there. And um, I'll just be sure that uh, it's, running, it's being run as effectively and efficiently as possible. So we'll look at every aspect of the controller's office and make sure that there has to be ways to improve. There's always ways to improve. And we'll make sure that there's no wasted spending. Okay. Gary, that's actually the last question that we have for you today, but you've got three minutes for a closing statement so you can appeal to the voters. Well, the Lackawanna County Controller is a very important position of Chief Financial Officer of Lackawanna County. I do have the business and financial background that I believe is required, having had the privilege of working with the public's money, uh, the great fortune to work with good people which allow me the ability to work full time as Lackawanna County Controller. I've never mismanaged money and never will. Uh, this, is, this race is not about anything personal, but I think that you have to look at the track record of everybody in this race. Um, one person in this race is the current county controller, and there is a background of, of mismanagement of money there. Uh, $12 million went missing when Mr. McDowell was the uh, city tax collector. It prompted an FBI investigation and according to the Scranton Times, the result of the FBI investigation was you can't prosecute incompetence. That is no good example to be set for the community. And um, my record as a businessman, as a school director, as a city council person is clear. And I think that people can trust me to be accountable for their money. Uh, I'll operate with an open door policy for transparency. I'll be a county controller that you can be proud of. I'll be a county controller that will set a good example for the community. Uh, this, is, this election is about trust and accountability. And if you trust me to be accountable for your money, I promise you that I won't let you down. And I appreciate your vote on May 17th. Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes our time with Gary DeBilio here this morning. Again, Gary is a candidate for the Lackawanna County Controller's position. Uh, the League of Women Voters, again, is a nonpartisan volunteer organization. So if you'd like to join the League, we invite you to visit our website at www.lwvlackawanna.org. And you can also view this interview and all of the other interviews and um, debates that the League will be hosting on our website as well. So thank you for joining us this morning, and we hope to see you out voting on May 17th. We're happy to have with us here this morning John Mello. John is another candidate for the Lackawanna County, County Controller's Office. So John, good morning, welcome. Good morning, I'm glad you invited me. Thanks for being here today. So we just wanted to let the voters know a little bit more about who you are. Uh, so you were born and raised in Dixon City and actually went to Dixon City High School, which is no longer there, right? Correct, the Mid Valley. Mid Valley, okay. And uh, you now live in Blakely Correct. and you're retired. Uh, you did attend the University of Scranton Penn State and also Penn State and took continuing ed classes at Penn State in both tax accounting and auditing as well. Correct. You have a long and varied service to the community in terms of uh, volunteer service. You, you had been involved in the Young Democrats of Lackawanna County. Right. Before, not now, right? Uh, no, I'm not young anymore. <laughs> uh, you're currently on the executive board of AFSCME. And uh, you've also been a volunteer fireman for over 50 years, and you're now the treasurer of Eagle Hose Company, and I think you said for 10 years, is that right? Correct. All right. Uh, as far as political experience, uh, again, a long and varied career with political experience. You spent four years as the controller in Dixon City, and then you were also a councilman in Dixon City for eight years. Correct. And then you served uh, two terms, or eight years, as the Lackawanna County Controller. That is right. All right. Well, <coughs> the first thing we're going to do is just refresh everybody uh, who's listening as to what the Lackawanna County Controller's Office does. So according to Lackawanna County's Home Rule Charter, the controller is the chief financial officer of the county and is responsible for gathering budget information, prescribing systems of accounting, approving all bills, claims, and demands, and preparing and authorizing their approval. Subject to the power and duty of the county commissioners to manage and administer the fiscal affairs of the county, the controller audits books, 
records and accounts of all county offices, and makes financial reports at the close of the year. So, and again, as I said before, none of the questions have been given to any of the candidates in advance. So this is the first time that you're hearing them. Let's start with what qualifies you for this office and include your financial or managerial experience or major accomplishments that would distinguish you from your opponents. Well, uh, you read most of them off already. I did serve as a uh, borough controller at Dixon City, eight years as councilman, and anybody that travels to Dixon City will see the progress we made. It's one of the most prog progressive communities in the valley. We build them all. We uh, put sidewalks and curving from one end of town to the other. We put all our creeks underground. And while this was all going on, I was part of it. I was the financial secretary of the small cities and community development programs. And we were one of the first communities in the valley to receive community development money. Okay. The controller, according to the definition, is more or less the watchdog of our tax dollars, responsible for ensuring that rules are followed, the budget is adhered to, and that our bills are paid. How will you ensure that appropriate policies are followed? Well, in the past, when I was controller, uh, the commissioners approved the bills, of course, they vote, at, vote on the bills at a uh, public meeting. When they're passed, they're sent down to the controller's office. We recheck every bill, every bill from the addition to the signatures, who endorsed it, who uh, requested it, and then we put the data into the computer system and then we make, at the end of the day, we have a report of how much was spent in that department. Okay. Can you explain the county's bidding process and the role that the controller plays in it? Well, I don't know if it changed, but when I was in there for the eight years, we'd have a public meeting. The bids would be sent out, and the day of the bids had to be returned. Uh, we met in the room. The bidders would be there, the contractors, the purchasing agent, myself, my deputy, and the chief of staff from the commissioners. My deputy would open the bids. I would read them out loud. We'd hand them over to the solicitor who was also there. We'd hand them over to the solicitor. We'd go through all the bids. After the bids were all read, we'd close the bids. And then the, uh, the attorney would take them in and read them out in private, which was the lowest bidder. OK. All right. What reports are available to the general public pertaining to the, ca the county's financial health each year? Are they being completed in a timely manner? And do you think improvements are needed? I would uh, say they're still being done timely. I think Ken inherited my staff. I trained them well. We went into the computer age. While I was there, we went from writing in a general uh, log book to the computers. Uh, everything was done by the book. Everybody was trained. Everybody was cross-trained. So I think anybody could come off the street, go in there and request something. We only keep files in the office for two years. All the, the other five years that we have to keep is in storage. And if they make a request, we'll try to find that bill for them or whatever they're looking for. And when we find it, we'll call them up and they could come down and receive it. Okay. Last question for you, John, today. Every day, businesses are looking for better ways to do things. What are your plans for increasing efficiency and or effectiveness of the controller's office, if any? And if you don't have any plans for that, why not? Well, I've been out of the office for almost four years. In the four years, there may be new technology, such, such as scanning the bills. I will look into that. We have a controller's convention where the vendors come and they show us all the new uh, updates they have for doing the, the work in the controller's office and the new uh, systems like windows and everything that will help us. And I will bring them in. We'll try it on a trial basis. And if it works, I'll try to have the commissioners purchase it for us. Okay. That's all the questions we have for you, but you have three minutes and you can speak to the voters and make your case for why they should vote for you. Well, 
In closing, I would like the taxpayers of Lackawanna County aware of my opponent's records. Ken McDowell lost over $2 million of taxpayers' money when he was city tax collector. As controller, he will cost the county taxpayers close to $1 million for an unlawful firing of two former employees for unjust and political reasons. And on top of all of that, he received cash donations from Bob Miracle, the corrupt realtor involved in the Children for Cash in Luzerne County. Gary DeBilio, he lost four straight elections. That's right. He set the record for losing four straight elections to Chris Doherty for mayor of the city of Scranton. I lost nor set records for losing taxpayers' money or elections. As controller, I went to work every day and did the job I was elected to do. This primary election, vote for the qualified and experience you deserve as a full-time controller, looking out for your best interests. May 17th, I am personally, personally asking you to vote for me, John A. Mello, for Lackawanna County Controller. Thank you. Thanks, John. We appreciate your time today. And again, remember that you can visit www.lwvlackawanna.org to see this interview or the other interviews that we're conducting and also the debates for this particular primary season. Thanks for joining us. And again, we hope to see you out and voting on May 17th. We're going to focus now on another race, also for controller's position, but this one is for the Scranton City controller's position. So we'll be electing a Scranton City controller, and there are two candidates on the Democratic ticket who are running for this office, so we're going to focus on them right now. Our first candidate this morning is the incumbent, Roseanne Novembrino. Roseanne, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you, Andrea. I'm, I'm most honored to be here. So we're going to let the, the voters know a little bit more about who you are before we get into the Q&A session. Okay. So you're born and raised in Scranton. Correct. And you are in Hyde Park, you said, West Scranton? Yes. Okay, yes. right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you're the as a full-time employee yes. of the city, you're city. the current Scranton yes. City Controller. Um, you went to high school at Marywood Seminary, so yes. I haven't heard that in a while. Yes, yes. I know. Uh, and uh, Roseanne has a long and varied career of public service. And uh, in the interest of time, I won't read everything, no. but I have picked out a couple of highlights. Uh, Roseanne's a member of St. Lucie's Roman Catholic Church. She was awarded Pennsylvania Controller of the Year in 2001. She also won the Woman of the Year Award by the Pennsylvania Federation of Democratic Women. She has been an outstanding volunteer in the past for Scranton Tomorrow. And uh, Roseanne, you said that your heart and soul belongs right now to the Deutsch Institute. Yes. So that's where uh, focusing on that, and you're yes. the vice president of the Deutsch yes, Institute board. So, uh, Roseanne is now finishing her; which she'll be finishing this year her sixth term in December as Scranton City's controller. Right. And uh, just as a matter for those of us who've been around for a really long time, mm -hmm. I date myself sometimes. Uh, your husband Richard was actually the controller, controller. of Scranton, Correct. and he passed away while he was in office. That's right. And then you were not appointed into the office, but you decided to run for the office after Richard's death and you won that race? Well, actually, I, I uh, accepted a position mm -hmm. and then I ran for the office. So, but you weren't appointed into no, the controller's no. position. You worked in the office, but you weren't the controller until you ran on your own in 1986, somewhere When, when there? Joe left, uh, I became acting controller. Okay. And then I ran for the and office. And then you ran yes. for the office. Yes. Okay. That was the procedure. All right. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, Roseanne's, Richard, uh, Roseanne's husband, Richard, did pass away. But Roseanne has three children, a son who's in Florida, and yes. two daughters that are two here. Two daughters. Two daughters uh -huh. that are here in Scranton. So that's a little bit of information about yeah. who Roseanne is. And we're going to let her speak for herself now. Um, I want to start out just by getting, letting the voters understand a little bit more about what the controller's office does. So according to Scranton's Home Rule Charter, the city controller is elected for a term of four years Correct. and maintains the accounting systems for the city government in accordance with governmental accounting principles and procedures, keeping accounting records and exercising financial and budgeting controls. The office of the city controller submits a monthly financial report to the mayor and city council showing the financial condition of various funds of the city government. So that's just a little snapshot yes. from our constitution, if you right. will, as far as what uh, the controller's office does. Yeah. So. 
Roseanne, let me ask you first, what qualifies you to run for the office? And just include any information mm -hmm. that distinguishes you from your opponent, mm -hmm. so anything pertaining to financial or managerial <coughs> experience or major mm -hmm. accomplishments. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, major accomplishments, I do feel my experience as a controller, I bring forth an asset of my experience. It, it, I have over 20, 24 years of it. And accomplishments, uh, I was so proudly involved with Steamtown. Uh, under various mayors, there were different projects that we were always uh, involved with. And also the, the tree house and the DPW and the police station. And the nice thing about that is when you're bidding out a contract, to see it all all the way through and then see it accomplished. I think that's one of the nicest things about the controller's office. Okay. So the controller, mm -hmm. according to the definition, is more or less the watchdog Correct. of our tax dollars, mm -hmm. responsible for ensuring that rules are followed, mm -hmm. the budget is adhered to, and that our bills are paid. How do you ensure that appropriate policies are followed? Well, uh, we do approve uh, purchases and expenditures on a daily basis. And uh, we always, the one thing that's a little tough is our overtime. I sent out a letter in September warning them of just uh, emergency spending as far as uh, purchases are concerned. Overtime, that is really up to a director. I'm not aware of what is being spent until I get that payroll afterwards. And that's their judgment if there's a, a, a snowfall or flooding or uh, they're fighting uh, excess fires. That is up the, to the director. I have no control over that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we do get, go over budget on that particular uh, scene. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain the city's bidding process and the role that mm -hmm. the controller plays yes. in that? Yes. Uh, and that's a, that's a wonderful thing because we're able to get the uh, most for our money. For example, anything from 1,000 to 5 requires three quotes. From 5 uh, to 10, we open the seal quotes in my office and uh, with the business administrator and uh, anyone else who participates in that bid. From 10,000 and over, that is a bit out in the paper, advertised in the paper, and it's, we open that in council chambers. Everyone is invited uh, there. They could see wh whoever bids uh, on a contract, they're able to review it. So that's, uh, we keep track, and the one ma main thing is uh, the bids have to re be received on a certain time, certain date, and if they're late, uh, we can't accept them. We mark them for the law department to review. Once the bid is completed, it goes up to the law department for review and the uh, director involved. Then, once it's awarded, uh, I do have my solicitor checking all the, the terms to make sure everything's proper, and that the proper person does get it. So, and then we have on-site bids. For example, if there's a house on fire and it must be thrown down, demolished, uh, we go right there. We'll, uh, the director of that particular department will call several bidders to be there. And they're opened right there, and so the work could be done immediately. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What reports are available to the general public mm -hmm. pertaining to the city's financial health each year? Are they being Yes. Uh, completed in a timely manner, yes. and are improvements needed? Well, uh, we are responsible for a monthly report and an annual report. But the one thing I have implemented that I'm, I'm most proud of is we do daily audits. I have a performance audit, auditor that works just on that. For example, if a check is placed in the wrong account by error, it's picked up immediately. He tracks everything in the system and uh, does a wonderful job of it. So that makes our life a little easier as far as uh, our monthly reports. 
And in our monthly reports, that is like the history of everything that happened. Every single expenditure is in there. And those reports are available to the oh, general yes, public? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Rosie, and everyday businesses are looking for better ways to do things. What are your plans for increasing, increasing mm -hmm. efficiency and effectiveness of the controller's office, if any? And if none, why not? Well, uh, I also, uh, whatever I do for this city, I also do for OECD. And I'm very proud of their first home buyers. That's a wonderful thing. They do loan out uh, money to businesses that would help create uh, activity in Scranton. And uh, I participate in that in any way I can. Okay. Yeah. So any plans to improve the uh, efficiency or effectiveness of your office in particular? Well, uh, I'm always involved with the technology of it. We do the spreadsheets. The one thing I would improve upon is uh, I'm always learning. You know, I always want to be in tune to everything that's happening, but uh, that's, that's the main thing that we do there, you know. Okay. Well, that's all the questions that we have for oh, you, really? so we uh, invite you to address the voters and uh, make your case for their support on May 17th. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea. As your controller, uh, I really... Uh, proved to be an asset to the Office of the City Controller and its goals. I have served for over 24 years, and this office requires a commitment to sound fiscal practice, understanding government process. I have always had an open door policy, re remembering the role of representing the people who have placed their confidence in me, the key to good government is communication. My stance will always be the same. Anything that the city is doing beneficial, I just want to be part of. If I see something that isn't right, for example, presently I'm stopping a service because they are not following their contract or their obligation to the city. So I made that known and I hope that will end very shortly. But uh, I you never need an appointment to see me. I don't have voicemail, and I have never, ever scanned or screened a call. So my, my office belongs to the people of Scranton because they're the ones who put me there. And I humbly ask for their support for re-election. And I thank you, and I thank you, Andrea, for having me here today. It's a pleasure to have you Thank here, you. Roseanne. Thank you. Again, this is Roseanne Ro Novembrino. She is uh, one of the two candidates running for election to the Scranton City Controller position on the Democratic ticket. And uh, we hope to see you out and voting on May 17th. We're going to continue now with the interviews for Scranton City Controller candidates. And with me is Marilyn Murphy Holden. Marilyn, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. We appreciate your time. So we're going to let the voters know a little bit about you before we get into our Q&A session. So Marilyn was born and raised in Scranton in Westside. That's and correct. you still live in Westside now, right? Well, I live in Hyde, Hyde Park. Hyde Park, Hyde Park. Yes. See, I, I don't live in Hyde Park, so I don't necessarily get those, uh, uh, the geographic boundaries of one versus I the understand. other. <laughs> I understand, I understand. Marilyn currently works for the St. Anne's Monastery Parish Credit Union? That's, That's correct. Right as an operations manager, and in addition to being that, she's the compliance officer, the bank secretary officer, and the visa credit debit card coordinator as well. Correct. So many hats under that one. Many <laughs> hats I wear, yes. Uh, Marilyn, as I said, she did graduate from West Scranton High School, so born and raised in Westside. That's correct. Uh, in the past, uh, her volunteerism was, uh, as many of us have been, uh, cycled right around her kids and Little That's League correct. and teaching CCD, and you've been a volunteer at St. Pat's as well in, in West Scranton. That's correct, right? working church picnics. That's yes. right. Uh, Marilyn, uh, has, her husband is John, and you've got three children. Yes, I do. Um, 
Colin, Kayleen, and I have a stepson, Ian. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marilyn is brand new to politics. Yes, I am. This is the <laughs> first time you've thrown your hat in the ring. Yes, it is. So we're going to uh, give the voters a little bit of information about the controller's office, and then we'll give you an opportunity to speak for yourself. Okay. So uh, once again, I just want to remind everybody that according to Scranton's Home Rule Charter, the city controller is elected for a term of four years and maintains the accounting systems for the city government in accordance with governmental accounting principles and procedures, keeping accounting records and exercising financial and budgeting controls. The office of the city controller submits a monthly financial report to the mayor and city council showing the financial condition of various funds of the city government. So Marilyn, our first question. What qualifies you to run for this office and include any financial or managerial experience or any major accomplishments in your life, either private or public, that distinguish you from your opponent? Well, um, I have 15 years um, experience with federal credit unions. Um, I worked in uh, for the CMC Employees Federal Credit Union for 11 years, five as assistant manager and six as manager. Currently, as you had uh, said, I am the operations manager, bank secrecy officer, okay. uh, compliance officer, debit card coordinator, and credit card coordinator. Okay. So I do wear many hats. <laughs> and any major accomplishments in that uh, you want to bring to light that distinguish you from your opponents? Uh, no, not really. I, I, as I said, I just have my financial background, and I feel that that's, that would be... Um, advantageous to the Office of City Controller. Okay. The controller, according to the definition, is more or less the watchdog of our tax dollars, mm -hmm. responsible for ensuring that rules are followed, the budget is adhered to, and that our bills are paid. How do you, or sh I should say, how will you ensure that appropriate policies are followed? Well, let, let me say this. Um, I would have rigid adhering to budget controls and principles, in short, fiscal discipline. Um, yearly enforcements of the office of the single tax office uh, for audits in accordance with the um, single tax act of 1929 which requires the controller to um, perform an audit or have an accounting firm perform an audit of the Scranton single tax office okay can you explain the city's bidding process and the role that the controller plays in it um, the bidding process, I, I am not really quite sure on, obviously because I have not in, in been involved, um, but I understand they are sealed bids, if I'm correct, and um, once the bids are unsealed, I believe that according to specifications, the lowest bidder would, in essence, uh, receive the bid. Okay. Do you know what reports are available to the general public pertaining to the city's financial health each year? Are they being accomplished in a timely manner and are improvements needed? I'm sorry, I, would you repeat? What reports are available to the general public pertaining to the city's financial health every year? So what's the, the responsibility of the controller's office for providing information to the general public? I, I'm not quite sure about that and, and I don't want to certainly elaborate on something that I, I'm really not sure okay. of. Um, I know that the, the public can go to the public library and get various reports, um, but again, I, 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 don't, I can't elaborate on something that I, I'm not certain of okay. at this time. Every day, businesses are looking for better ways to do things. What are your plans for increasing efficiency and or effectiveness of the controller's office? Could you repeat that question? I'm sorry. Uh, what are your plans for increase, increasing efficiency and or effectiveness of the controller's office? Well, I'll tell you, after decades of unchanged leadership and the consistent failure to audit the single tax office, um, I believe the controller's office requires the energy and objectivity and the financial experience as a professional. Um, the law, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Take your time. Equally important, the, fi the current financial deficit of the city demands an aggressive watchdog who will more or less, I will spot red flags, um, question the administration, dig for all answers, uh, try to untangle uh, financial contradictions and controversy, 
and examine budget fingers, uh, fingers, excuse me, bu budget uh, cash balances, cash flows, and hold vendors accountable to the terms of their contract and the city departments to their budget expenditures. I believe each and every department head needs to sharpen their pencils, so to speak, and um, try to bring spending down. Okay. Marilyn, those are all the questions that we have for you, but you have three minutes now and you can address the voters directly and make your case for why they should choose you on May 17th. Well, first and foremost, I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for inviting me to um, come and share today my views on the Office of the City Controller. Um, I would first like to say that there will be rigid adherence to budgetary controls and principles. Yearly audits will be enforced in accordance with the 1929 uh, tax law. Careful, I will carefully scrutinize all contracts, uh, budget orders, and any documents which involve financial obligations linked to the city. Audits we will be conducted before payments of all bills, invoices, demands against the city, and approved only if authorized by the proper departments. Monthly presentations will be prepared and submitted to the mayor and city council reflecting the financial condition of the funds of the city government and the items included in the annual operating budget, estimated reven revenue, and revenues received. I will instill in efficient work ethics with all staff members. I expect all, I expect team effort at all times. Honest services to the city from each and every department. Thank you. Marilyn, thank you so much for coming down and joining us this morning and, and sharing some information about who you are as a candidate. And I especially want to thank you because I know that you've got a fever right now and you came out anyway. And so. I have a sore throat, <laughs> yes, so, and my ears are blocked. So it's. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming and, down. And thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Don't forget, everyone, that May 17th is Election Day. Um, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political volunteer organization uh, dedicated to informing and engaging the electorate. We do that through interviews such as this, as well as through debates. I want to remind you that we have three debates coming up. The first on May 4th will be held at 7 p.m. in the DeNaples Center at the University of Scranton. That's located on Mulberry Street. That will be for the Democratic candidates who are running for uh, Lackawanna County Commissioner. The next evening on May 5th, we will host a debate for the Republican candidates running for Lackawanna County Commissioner. That debate will be held in the Brennan, uh, Brennan Hall Pern Auditorium on the second floor. That's also the University of Scranton campus. It's on Madison Avenue. Then uh, the following week on May 11th, we will be debating with the candidates, the Democratic candidates for Scranton City Council. That debate will be held again in the DeNaples Center on Mulberry Street, the University of Scranton campus. All of these events are at 7 p.m. They are all open to the public, so we invite you to come. If you're not able to attend, we hope that you're watching on ECTV. And uh, you can also catch, uh, catch up with uh, these events on uh, our website, www.lwvlackawanna.org. Again, I want to remind you that we are a volunteer organization. If you're interested in the kind of things that we do as volunteers, come on and join us. You can find uh, information on membership on our website. Uh, we have a good time. We learn a lot about government. And uh, we hope that, uh, that you're interested and uh, willing to come out and, and join us. Uh, I want to thank ECTV for their ongoing support of all league events and also the University of Scranton for hosting us uh, on our upcoming debate. So again, don't forget May 17th. And uh, there are two races for controllers, one for Lackawanna County that we interviewed the candidates for and one for uh, the Scranton City controllers. So don't forget to pull the levers, for, or pull the levers, boy, am I dating myself. <laughs> don't forget to fill in the little circles on the ballot for uh, those races as well. Thanks so much for joining us.